I want to read um, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 um, to um, begin where we're going today. And it's all about really journeying through and finding the glorious riches in Christ Jesus, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, so let me read again. Um, today, Steve and I are going to share our rags to riches testimony. So um, we'll start this with Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. And his fullness fills you, even though you're once like corpses, a dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the, rebelli- in the religion, customs, and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of this earthly realm who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. The corruption that was once in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds, our minds Dictated, living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everybody else. But God, (laughs) but God still loved us with such a great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm, for we are now joined with one in Christ. Yes. Throughout the coming ages, we will be a visible display of the infinite, limitless riches of his grace and kindness, which was showered upon us in Jesus Christ. For it was only through his wonderful grace that we believed in him. Nothing we did could ever earn his salvation, not even our faith. For it was the gracious gift from God that brought us to Christ. So no one will ever be able to boast, for salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. We have now become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each one of us. For we are joined with Christ, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and good works that we would do, that we would do to fulfill. Isn't that just mm, so rich? So we're discovering the glorious riches in Christ Jesus, right? That's our whole discovery process. And in that, as we discover that, the riches of the world just disappear, right? The riches are what what we believe are the things in the world that can satisfy our longings. Um, All of a sudden become just like, just pale in comparison to what God has given us. And so Steve and I want to share what we call our rags to riches story. Oftentimes you hear like rags to riches more in the realm of someone being very poor and then they get very wealthy. But ours is from um, God's standpoint, from a heavenly standpoint. Um, in Isaiah, it says, our righteousness is like filthy rags, our own righteousness. And, and the riches that we receive from Christ are glorious. And so it's rags to riches in, in, in that sense. And so, God, we want to share that with you at the, as an exclamation point to this um, journey through Ephesians. And part of that, we want to invite you to, there's keys in it. There's things that you're going to find that are very similar in our journey. In our journeys together, we're all in this journey into the heart of God and for him to transform us from glory to glory. So we want to share this. We're going to have fun. We even have some fun pictures to share with you, <laughs> as promised. So it'll be good. Um, so I want to start. Um, I'm going to start first. We're going to just take team this. We're going to back and forth. And I want to start first by giving you a little background. Because people see, you know, when they see Steve and I up here, that you really don't know. You don't know uh, what we've walked through, what God has, has brought us through. And it's a testimony of how good he is, just how good he is. And um, so I just want to share a little bit about my background and Steve's, and we'll take you through that. But um, so anyway, growing up, I grew up in um, with a single mom, my sister and I, and my our mother, who shared with really loved us unconditionally. I always felt very loved by her, and um, very taken care of because she really sacrificed a lot. 
with us in her own life to take care of us. But we were in a lot of brokenness. I mean, we're just, brokenness was all around us. I mean, growing up, I never saw a healthy marriage. And I'm not exaggerating when I say I didn't see even one. Not in our family, not in the neighborhood we lived in. It just didn't exist. And then when my stepfather came into the picture, um, he was just a really angry man. He was really, um, he was broken and he was full of fear. I didn't realize that till later in life that that was what was going on with him. But he would, um, you know, he, he had alcohol, so there was some abuse with alcohol. He was very, he would use intimidation. And um, I, you know, oftentimes, like when I'd ask for something, when I'd ask for him to help in some way, Oftentimes, it was met with silence, no answer, which sometimes is very, can be more painful than even a harsh answer, because it was met with just, you don't exist, you know, like that question doesn't even, you know, and, and um, also he used his eyes for intimidation. So oftentimes, if he, you know, with, in different circumstances, he would look and I, I just would look away. And so for many years in my life, I could not look people in the eyes. I found that later in life as I walked and I'd have conversation with people, I would look away. So for me to stand up here today, look you all in the eyes and be able to speak on a microphone is really amazing. More, more amazing than you can understand. More amazing. Because God, only through God could, could he break that intimidation off my life. And only through forgiveness and walking through with my stepfather later in life and being his advocate could that come in the opposite spirit and break. And only by God. Because when I grew up, he was my enemy. He was my enemy growing up, and that's how I viewed him for many years of my adult life. And God, only God comes in and gives you love for your enemies and changes and showed me brokenness with that, showed me what was going on. But So this is the background. So we're growing up, and I always had a heart for, like, I always, like, like, had a heart for beauty, like in the sense of inner beauty, like like wanting to see people for who they really are and just wanting to, you know, just really um, being sensitive and aware of that. But I was a very hypersensitive child. Now I know what that is and how that, how that gift works in my life. But when I was a small child, I could walk in, and now I understand this, and feel feel people's pain, feel what was going on in their lives, feel like many things going on. And if you've seen the Man of Steel show, you know, um, I don't know if you've seen that with the Superman, Man of Steel, but there's a point in where he's like, and he's in, he's, um, he's like an overload. And he's like, oh, it's all too big. You know, it's like, I can't, and his mom said, just make it small. Listen for my voice. But for me, everything was just like, you know, I, I just picked up on so many things and I didn't know what to do with it. So I shut down. That's what you do when you don't, especially a child or a young person, you don't know how to handle the things. You shut down. You shut down emotionally. You shut down. Um, and, and you just start to take, you know, um, self-preservation. I'll take care of myself. You know, you just start going in that mode. It's survival. You, it really is survival at that moment because there's just so much brokenness, so much, so many things. And, and, and again, like, I felt loved in it, and I so appreciate that. My mom is a person who really knows how to love unconditionally, and I, I so value that, and she's still, she's my champion, like, that. I've learned so much from her. But the reality was that in our lives. So I was searching as I was growing into a young, uh, young girl, and I, and I, you know, I have this stirring in my heart for beauty and seeing people, but I'm now shut down. I have walls up I'm taking care of myself and um, I start being drawn into the modeling industry because I was finding like a lot of attention there and it was beauty now that is not the picture of beauty that God has now brought me into but it was a picture of beauty back then that I was longing for and didn't understand so I went to the draw and the draw was the modeling industry lots of affirmation lots of affirmation um, that I was longing for from um, men in particular, but didn't realize that it would never, you know, um, it just left you wanting more, right? The more you get of, of the counterfeit, the more you just, you, it never satisfies. So I was really drawn and I was really, um, so I became, I, I started, I did um, pageants and 
and I became Miss Hawaiian Tropic of Wisconsin, and I did all these things, yeah. And 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 I thought I was doing really good because it was feeling really good, you know. And and I was succeeding, you know. And so I was doing all these pageants, winning all these things, you know. It took me to traveling, which I was so excited about because I wanted to travel. Growing up with a single mom, we never got to travel, so I was finally traveling, meeting new people. And, and all these things. So I thought it was, you know, I thought it was going really well. And then I have a, I have a, a heart for business as well. So as I was out and um, doing these pageants and all these things, I was like seeing how they were doing things. I thought, wow, I can be the one to market that. I can be the one to, um, um, you know, make money off of this, basically, instead of giving the money, part of the money over to other people, you know. And so anyway, I started a business. I started a modeling agency. And so, um, and I'll, we'll talk more about that, but then, um, so that's where Steve and I met with, was through the modeling industry. So I started a modeling agency, and we'll share more, uh, share more about it. It was a very successful modeling agency here um, in the Midwest, so, but we'll share more about that. So we'll hear your, kind of give your background as well now. I've got a projector screen, some lights. Not that so. background. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My husband. <laughs> my my world was completely opposite of her names. Yes. Like I grew up in small town USA. I mean mm -hmm. for real. And you know, my, my parents were, were married up until my mom passed away a couple years, fifty some years they were married, you know. So I mean the divorce thing, there was only like one kid that I knew that was actually divorced, even on our street. It was like just unheard of. And so my reality of like family and marriage was Hallmark. <laughs> was Hallmark. <laughs> Hallmark channel. But well, anyway, but you know, it was it was that was really that was kind of the, the the world that I grew up in. And I mean, I mean, I knew that I was loved. Not that I ever really or ever heard those words much as growing up. A lot from my mom, but not so much from my dad. And it's interesting this because that's I think it's even part of his generation is that just that that emotion and just the power of three words: I love you. I mean. When you don't hear that, I mean, it, it does something. Mm -hmm. But when you do hear it, it does something, <laughs> you know. And and so we'll, we'll get into that a little bit further. But but to, to me, I did. I, I grew up really just completely opposite of Renee. I grew up in a really good home, and we, we got to see the world a little bit, and you know, and but but yet there, there was still this thing inside of me too. And part of it is because when, when you're not completely affirmed by your parents. You're, you're still looking for that affirmation, and you, you go to different places. And so to me, I was, I was kind of a class clown a little bit, you know, just looking for the laughter. No, no, no I'm serious. Yeah, I know. I, I know it's hard it, to believe. You? I know, but no way. <laughs> just different ways. I mean, I was that even in my family. I was, I was the comic relief in, in our family. And, but oh, yeah. all of it was really just trying to find that affirmation and that affection, you know, honestly. And so that was kind of, kind of my journey. And, you know, even getting into to school, I, I was uh, uh, very much involved with athletics, excelled extremely well in all of the athletic stuff. Pretty much everything I did was just kind of like this. I was able to do it really well. It was just, but yet I never heard those words, good job. You know what I mean? And so the part of that, was, I was, it was a driven dimension inside of me. And I would say even, honestly, there was a, a perfectionism which is actually a spirit, by the way. See, there's a difference between excellence and perfectionism. And I, I would say that that was part of my propelling, my longing, because I had to do everything right, because I was just looking for those words, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job. And uh, it really welcomed in something that really wasn't healthy, because it just, it, you just, you're always driven, and you never feel like you're doing quite enough. You never think you're doing quite right. And, and so that was part of even just my ongoing thing with excelling in athletics. And, and just, I mean, literally everything I did, except for uh, math. I don't know what it was. And now I, I love math. But anyway, it's just really weird. I think part of it because my brother and sister were, like, really good academically. And, and I was more the, anyway, the, <laughs> yes. So, but, yeah. And, but in all of that, you know, I just, again, you know, and I think, you know, many of you of us can relate to that, you know, because I didn't have Christ. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. So, so part of there's even that dimension of longing. I mean, we, we, I grew up in a, a Catholic family. We went to Christmas and Easter, you know, two times a year that you went to church, you know, and then you, you're all good for the next year, you know. But, I mean, that was really kind of my, my reality and upbringing, too, you know. And, you know, many times without, without Christ being in a life, 
We go after everything else to find and fill voids. And I mean, I started binge drinking when I was like 16 years old. And I mean, I have very addictive personality. Part of it is I'm very driven. I'm type A. I, I just, I'm, you know what I mean? And so it, in every part of my life, throughout my life, I've been like that. And part of it, you know what? That's actually what God created me. Yeah. Really. You know, and, and, you know, I would have been probably diagnosed as uh, ADD. <laughs> Not true. I'm AD. I'm ascending and descending, okay? So <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you get distracted, like, I'm easily distracted. But it's all good, really. It really is. But part of it, again, I believe that's a part of the makeup of who I am, too. I don't sit still very well. You know, I... I think about even like board games. My family like to play board games. I hated board games. They bored me. I don't think I ever, I don't, and still to this day, I don't think I've ever finished a game Monopoly. Never. I just, I didn't have the time or patience. Even like fishing, like, you know, I like being outdoors and see like my grandpa and my, my dad and my brother. We'd go out into the fishing boat. That, that was the worst thing ever. I mean, like sit and like wait for fish to come. I'm sorry. But it was really hard. So anyway, whew. That was kind of me, and that's really kind of still me. So, but, you know, in all of that, again, you know, I, I uh, started binge drinking. A part of it was just, again, filled voids. There's, there's realities of real pain in my life, and part of it, just that numbing began early in life. And, you know, I, I liked to party, uh, uh, and that continued even as I, uh, even when I was looking at school. So I actually had a couple scholarships to play football. But I had a whole bunch of my friends that were coming to Madison. I'm thinking, yeah, let's go to Madison, man. It's like the party school. That'd be sweet, you know? And so, I mean, that became my motivation. I literally didn't take the scholarships to come to Madison because it was the party school. That's weird. But that was, that was my reality, though, too. And so I landed here in Madison, and that's how I ended up getting here. I've tried to escape many times. Yeah, I, I just can't get out of this place because I'm called here. By the grace of God. I mean, literally. And there are so many times where I tried to, and it just didn't work. Because God is doing something amazing in Madison. It's for this time while I'm here. I mean, it's, yeah, the redemption of all things. I mean, and so, yeah, State Street was like, I lived in just around the corner here. College Club was, uh, I lived there. I mean, I had a, my own bedroom, whatever. But the truth is, is that, you know, all of that stuff, I mean, honestly, I, I, can, I can think back to how empty I would feel whole night of partying and whatever else might be going on. And none of it satisfied ever, you know? And uh, I had met, met a girl in, in, in college, and we ended up getting pregnant, and we had the baby, which is, was unusual because all of my friends were not having their babies. They were, they were just abortion after abortion after abortion. I mean, there's story after story when I think about it. But uh, my son Justin was spared yeah. nice. from the claws of he's death. Amazing. And he, he is, he's an amazing young man yes. and uh, just so blessed, actually, mm -hmm. that, you know, even in my unawareness, I guess, of, of God, there was still this conviction and this, this something that was just speaking in the depths of my being, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not even an option. It was just weird. But mm -hmm. it, it's amazing, too, because, see, God was already speaking and working on my heart. And, he, you know, I, I think about, I mean, I've got angels that have been with me all my whole life. I mean, because I, I shouldn't be here otherwise. I mean, for real. I mean, drunk driving, oh, my gosh. That was, a, that was almost a daily thing, for real. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, I'm, I'm actually alive and well. You know, just this couple Fridays ago, I, I celebrated, uh, you know, 20... 22 years of being sober. Yeah, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. And this is last Friday. 23 years is when Renee and I received Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, that's, isn't that awesome or what? Anyway. Yeah. So, so go ahead. as Steve was saying, like, so he, you know, his experience, I didn't believe in marriage. I was never going to get married. I lived with a guy for seven years. And when we broke up, um, that's when Steve and I met in the modeling industry. I didn't believe in marriage. I was never going to get married. I was very liberal in all my mindsets. I believed in abortion. 
Um, you know, I can stand up here today and know that I'm healed from the choice of abortion. But I was very liberal in every way. I was not going to get married. I, you know, I believed in abortion. And um, so in that way, that's, that's just who I was, this, this person who, um, you know, that's just where I was at. Um, I also, like Steve said, he grew up very in one place. I, we moved around most of our, you know, my... Uh, um, throughout my childhood, we moved around a lot. So I was very used to having to go into new situations a lot with that. And um, with that, there was just a lot of shame. We never went to church. So again, Steve didn't have much of a church background. Either did I. We, we didn't, there was a lot, there was shame on my mom and her generation having a baby out of wedlock, children out of wedlock. And so we just, it never, you know, we just, we just, church was not a part of our lives. Although I, I do remember some hymns my grandma used to sing. <laughs> so, um, and um, out of, when Steve said he went more to alcohol and everything, I went to work, workaholic. I was a person that the more successful I was, um, the more I would find that, you know, affirmation and, you know what I mean, just so my um, you can be a workaholic as much as an alcoholic, right? And just drown yourself in things. Especially, that's a very dangerous one because you get really praised from the world. The more successful you become, you just get so much more praise. Um, and you'll, you know, you'll see with the modeling agency, we got, we had many write-ups in the paper. I was, um, I'll share more with you after we show the pictures. But also one, one last thing before we show the pictures is that we had. Um, for me, like, I was a very accomplished young woman. I could do a lot of things, especially as a young child. I was just very top grades, top athlete, top everything. But what I found is jealousy, as people were, like, um, jealous of that. This is how crazy and how deep the longing for, for affirmation can go. I purposely got in trouble and purposely got bad grades to fit in. Because I have people, she's goody two shoes, and just, just especially from girls, the other women. I have so many affirming women in my life, and I affirm women now. It's so amazing. <laughs> but, but, but then that was, and so there was always a shrinking back, which, which came, and God broke through that in, in, in the process. But I'm just sharing that as kind of a background. So here we are. Um, well. Steve's in Madison. He has, is married, has a young, you know, taking you to, he has a young uh, child, a baby. I came out of a seven-year relationship. Um, I own a modeling agency, and we meet through the modeling agency. So we have some pictures to show you <laughs> from, uh, from our uh, BC days, <laughs> before Christ days, BC. And um, for me, the, the pictures are more like about over 20 years old. For Steve, they're between 20 and 10 years old because he continued modeling, and I went from modeling into being an agent. So um, I went more towards the agent side of things. So anyway, this is fun. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard. <laughs> you can 80s and 90s. Come on. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that is so cheesy. I'm the one in the middle with the big white hair, of course. <laughs> it, uh, the top of that says, or the article says, "Model of Success." Then this is when I became an agent. Did you see it in that one? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's very 80s and 90s. There we go with Steve. There's Justin, our son, too. That's passion. That's Steve and I. <laughs> There's the capital and background. <laughs> Some ads. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> the look. That's my magnum look. <laughs> These are called composites. That's what the models use to promote themselves. That's our dog. <laughs> it used to be our dog. <laughs> yeah, that's attitude, right? That's so fun. Turtlenecks, I know. <laughs> that was a little, you recognize that's in Madison. So there's some photos. So isn't that fun? Very 80s, 90s, and that it's so it's so fun. 
So in the modeling industry, I remember as girls would come through and um, you know would be auditioning and trying out for our pageants, we would um, ask some questions. We'd have uh, questions that we asked each of the women, and one of them was, you know, who's the most influential person in your life and why? And and I, ninety, I'm not exactly like ninety to ninety five percent of the women that we interviewed that way for our pageants would say something like. My mom's my real hero because my dad's a jerk. Or my mom's my hero because my dad was never in my life. My mom's my hero. I mean, I mean, over and over. And I was like, this is before, this is how God just starts working on our hearts. I start going, wait a minute, that's me. Every one of these girls that I'm interviewing, I'm like sitting on the other side of them and looking and going, that's me. And we're all drawn to this. And, you know, there's, you know, start, I see things in patterns a lot. That's how, and so even then God started working and I started recognizing their, their people were drawn into the pageants and the beauty because they were lacking something. And I started, to, that's where some things started to stir in, in my heart to recognize maybe there's more to this. And um, basically for us, our lifestyle was out in the nightclubs all the time. Like when Steve and I met, our, our, our life was in the nightclubs. I mean, that we have passionate. <laughs> Looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> it wasn't that kind of music, but. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Like so literally like, dance from. Yeah. No, whatever, you know, Dust to dawn. one thing you'll know about, see, whatever we're passionate about, we go wholehearted. So we are, just like we're the last ones out of here all the time or any time we gather with, you know, for something with God, we were the last ones out of the bar all the time. Whatever we did, we did with passion, with all our hearts. So every night we're in the bars, every night we're schmoozing people because in the industry, it's all about connections. It's all about schmoozing. It's all about what you can get from people. You know, how you can, how someone else can help you get ahead. And so it was very much a lifestyle of, you know, just going after fame and fortune. You know, a lot of just like, okay. And so um, when, um, so as we're going after that, I had people, um, Steve ended up, should we share that? Well, I'll have you share a little bit about the one like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. So when, um, we would get uh, models contracted in different parts of the world. So, like, as an agent, I was, I was known to find the potential in people, like, take the girl next door and supermodel, you know, like, be able to look and transform. And so we have contracts to, you know, New York, L.A., and then into Europe. And, and so we contracted. So Steve was one of the models when he came in. Um, he was contracted um, to Europe and things. My sister actually, Beth, actually scouted him in a bar. That's how she, you should come work for my my sister's agency, you know, and stuff. And I'm like, you know, I've already got an agent, thanks. Yeah, but you came anyway. But I did come. Anyway. <laughs> and then he dated the boss. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So it's just kind of funny. So now we look back like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so that was our lifestyle. Again, thinking that fame and fortune would, would um, satisfy the longings, right? And so here we are in that, and then we, you know, for me personally, it's like I'm going through, and I realize that, man, this isn't cutting it. Like, we would be around very, very wealthy people, very, very famous people, um, and and I'd say, yeah, they've got it. They, they've got a, you know, they've got what I'm looking for. And then when we meet them, I would find, oh my gosh, they're miserable, and they, they haven't found whatever it is I'm looking for. They haven't found it either, and and so I ca so that was where my heart was being stirred. There's got to be more. And then there was a stirring like there's more to my life than this. There's just more to destiny that I was created for something more. So that was really the initial first draw. Um, but as this is going on, and again, Steve and I are living together. He has a son, and, you know, has an ex-wife and and a son from from. Um, his marriage, and Justin is now is living with us, which is pretty amazing. And um, well, really, at that time he was going between the two homes. Yeah, at that time he was going between the two homes. It was pretty crazy. Steve and his ex-wife could barely have conversations with each other without just raging. It was it was hard. And oftentimes I would try and stand in and um, and mediate and stuff. But anyway, so that, that has changed too. So we'll share more about that. But anything else from that time? So anyway, I'm drawn. I'm feeling drawn um, by God. I'm like, I'm feeling, not knowing it's God, but I'm searching. Then I had somebody in the modeling industry. There's people in the modeling industry that were sharing with me in LA and different places about God. Or And I was like, 
maybe this is it. It was kind of like that. And I had a friend from high school. I remember years ago, and you know, coming out of high school, she shared about Jesus. But I said, thanks, but no thanks. You know, I'm good. I'm a good person, right? I'm good. And so, anyway, so, anyway, so Steve, if you want to take it from there then. So you got a contract to Barcelona, Spain. Yeah. Well, and part of it, too, I, I've been tra- I did a lot of traveling in the region, Chicago, Minneapolis, Milwaukee here. A lot of the stuff that... Uh, that we were doing, actually, it's crazy, all of the different corporations. I mean, Kohl's Department Store, Carson Perry Scott, mm-hmm. uh, Land's End, Kohl's Department Store, there was Prangies at the All of those were literally based here, right, in Wisconsin. It was crazy. So I didn't have to go very far to get a lot of the work. And so, I mean, I was getting work all the time. And I uh, had an opportunity to head over to Europe and went over there and had a really good time. And then had another opportunity to go back. And, but it was during that window of time between the two trips. Again, it was a real similar thing. I was like, ah. Oh, like, what is life really yeah. about? And it was the same thing. We go to these parties and hang out at people's houses, and I'm going, and you see, you know, you see this guy that's really famous. We could mention names, but we're not going to. But and you see them sitting in the corner, just like miserable. You know, they got all the money in the world that you would necessarily ever ever need, and actually no joy, no peace, no nothing. And I'm thinking, man, I know there's more, and and that's not it. You know what I mean? And so there was a real like sincerity and a searching that was going on in my heart and there was just like this quest to find truth and like Renee said I had been uh, got married actually we had a baby then we got married so by the way that's not the way to do it okay <laughs> get married then have children <laughs> but but I, it was it were, there was just a lot of things going on within the depths of my soul and part of again I use drugs and alcohol really just to numb pain to numb things I just so, so I could manage it and what a wrong way by the way I mean, it just honestly just doesn't work. And if any of you are slugging with that, I want to pray with you afterwards because mm-hmm. there, there, there's, a, there's a joy that will set you free. And Come when on. he sets you free, you're free indeed. And Come see, on. it's just so, so powerful, so amazing, just the precious goodness of Jesus. But so I, w- I, I had another opportunity to go back, and I said to Renee, I said, Renee, I, I just need to find some answers to life. I really was like on this quest to find the meaning to life, you know. <laughs> and so I went over to Europe and... While I was there, the first week, I remember the first week I had, had an opportunity when, uh, when I was there. One of the guys that was living in the hostel with me, who I had seen uh, previously when I was living in Madrid, um, we were together in Barcelona, and he, his girlfriend happened to be there. And, you know, she's, uh, she's from, uh, from India, and she whips out her tarot cards, and she starts doing this tarot card reading. And, and I'm like, that's so stupid. <laughs> I mean, none of that makes any sense. Well, let me read your poems. So I'm thinking... There ain't nothing written on them. So she begins to read. I'm like, that, that is so, again, it just so ridiculous, the things that you were saying. I did, it didn't, none of it made sense. I'm going, clearly this woman doesn't know what she's talking about. That is not what I'm looking for. So she doesn't have the answers either. You know, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I should write a song about that. <laughs> but, and so, so again, this week, I, uh, the castings got done early, and I thought, hey, I'm just going to go check out Barcelona while I'm here. And I went down where Christopher Columbus got his orders. And, and it was just kind of the, just the history and all of that. And I remember continue my journey down in the old goth part of town of Barcelona. And I remember turning this corner, and then as I turned to this corner, there was this huge cathedral across the street, and I heard this voice, go inside. No, it was more, it was nicer. Stephen, go inside. <laughs> it was a happy voice. It really was. So, so I was like, yeah, let's do that. So I, I walk across the street, and I remember going inside this huge cathedral, and as I went in, many of the cathedrals, if anyone's traveled to Europe, really are like museums these days. And, and so this one had, it had these amazing, like, Florida ceiling paintings of Jesus and his disciples and statues and just all of this incredible art that was, you know, came about during the, the Renaissance and you know, the, the early Reformation. And, and so it was just, it was really cool. And then, so I was just kind of walking around, checking that out. But I heard, it, heard this, this echoing coming from this smaller chapel and I thought, I'm just going to go check out what's going on in there. So I, I went in the back of this place, and there was a little Catholic mass going on, a whole bunch of little old ladies and this priest, you know. And so I just did what I knew how to do, and I just I kneeled down in the back. And all of a sudden, I just felt this warmth and this presence. Again, I didn't have a clue what the guy was saying because he was either Latin or Spanish, and I don't speak either one of those. So, But there was this presence that just literally hit me. And I remember as I was just sitting there going, whoa. And just this peace just started, like, flooding me. And, you know, when you've tried everything, and I mean, I tried all kinds of stuff, you know what I mean? And, and none of it ever brought peace. It just made you feel like crap, and you throw up, and you're praying to a whole different God. 
And, <laughs> but now I'm in this <laughs> church, in this, this peace. I'm going, whoa, what is this? You know, and i just overwhelmed by the, the actual presence of God. And see, to me, that was the beauty because even before I entered in the church, it had nothing about actually even going into the church. It was the voice that said, go inside. There was a drawing and a calling and a longing that was coming from the uncreated God of heaven. And I was being invited into an understanding that he was what I was looking for. So here I am sitting in the back of this thing, and i just overwhelmed by this piece. And I remember at one point just kind of looking at uh, up front where the altar area was, and uh, Jesus hanging on the cross, you know, just kind of, and then, you know, Mary and John and the other Mary are at his feet. And all of a sudden, Jesus just kind of wakes up. And he, he's like now looking at me, and, and he just starts to talk to me. And he said, you don't need to look any further. The peace that you're feeling right now, that's me. You don't need to look any further, Steve. I, I am what you're looking for. And I remember then I just bursted out in tears, and I'm just weeping now. Is just going, wait a minute. Jesus is real. <laughs> it's not just like a flannel board thing <laughs> stories that we learned in Sunday school. It was like he was real. You guys are going, what the heck is a flannel board? Well, back in the olden days, here's what they would do. They would put these big boards up, and then they'd stick these little flannel characters on, on, the, on this flannel board to tell the story. Anyway, so that was what a flannel board was. So he, he, was, he wasn't that. It was like all of a sudden I'm going, whoa, he's real. And I'm, again, I'm weeping, and this weeping is going on and on and on, and Again, just overwhelmed by peace that just goes way beyond my comprehension. It was way better than any drug I'd ever smoked. It was better than anything that I'd ever put inside my body. It was like, whoa, this is it. And so then I went back out into, like, the main room again, just kind of, I didn't want to leave because I'm like, if I leave this place, is this going to leave too? You know what I mean? So there was that, that reality. And I remember this one painting in particular. And Jesus is holding on to this little lamb, and then there's angels all around him. And as I'm walking by, it was kind of like, the eyes start to follow me. You ever see everything? Ever like, and I'm like, whoa, come on, come on. But then as I stopped, I, again, I felt the presence of just the Lord, and he just began to speak. He goes, I'm what you're looking for. I'm the longing of your heart. And I'm just like, Whoa. and it was like, it was like, I'm what you're looking like, Literally, it sounded like it was in the cathedral, like as he was speaking to me. I'm like, whoa, and I'm not even drunk, and I'm not even wasted. I mean, if there had been someone next to me, I was like, dude, you hear that? It was that kind of like just audible, resounding goodness of a father that just began to speak to me. And so I knew from that point on, it's like, man, God is so real. And I know that he's real. And I just started talking to God. Because, yeah. I mean, he was talking to me, so I just started <laughs> talking back. Now, I didn't realize that was prayer, by the way. It was just, that was kind of, I just thought it was comfort. Because I thought prayer was, you know, the, the Our Father and the grace we did on Thanksgiving and Christmas. But anyway, that was kind of just the beginnings of the openings of just this reality that God is so real and that he was available that, that like literally while I was in the muck, while I was in the mires, like he pulled me out, out of the, out of the lake of fire and he set me high upon a rock. He put me out of the darkness and brought me into his marvelous light. And to me, that's, that's our God. And you know, that's his desire for every human being on the planet, that no one is too far from the goodness of God, regardless of what they're involved in or what they're not involved in. The point is that destiny is that we be with him forever. The destiny is that we actually get to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. The destiny is that we actually get to run with the goodness of the Father all the days of our life. So if that starts today, then run and have fun because yeah. it really is. I mean, the greatest adventures that I've ever had and been in has, has been since I received Christ. And yes. I, the greatest adventures are yet to come. Yes. I haven't yes. seen anything yet. Yeah. I'm just declaring to you. Yes. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm yes. only 23. Come on. <laughs> We're only in the spirit. Yeah, come on. So anyway, halfway across, this is going on with Steve in Barcelona back here again. I'm, I have people in the modeling industry sharing Christ with me. Now, as you can already probably tell, Steve and I are very different. God is very demonstrative with Steve. <laughs> Hallelujah! big and demonstrative. I'm more... It's true. <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> I am more of a processor, more introvert at heart, you know, and all this. So God is meeting me in the or way. We're both really introverted, though. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so God is meeting me in a very in a, in a way that you know speaks to my heart. He's very gentle with me. He's just wooing me. He's having people share with me, and I'm saying maybe, well, maybe God, you're it. So I start to process. I start to so mine's like, well, God, maybe you're it. I'll open my heart, and I just opened it a little bit, and He started to come in. And he started to come in. And mind you, we're not saved yet. We have not been convicted of our sin, but we're being drawn and met outside of the four walls of the church. We're being, this is outside. This is in the craziness of our life. God is wooing and starts to speak to us about our destiny and the purpose that for which we are created. Now, he's brilliant. God has brilliant strategies because how do you get a hold of a person full of pride? You talk about their destiny first. <laughs> Very good strategy of the Lord. <laughs> so he starts to draw us by you're made for more because it's all about us at that time, right? Very selfish lifestyle, living for ourselves. It's all about me, <laughs> <Another song>. Jesus. <laughs> These are old songs. <laughs> and so anyway, so here we are. And um, so I'm being drawn. He's being drawn. He comes home from Barcelona. And again, we're living together. Now he... By the way, that is not, not the way to do things, young we're people. We're not married. We are living together. So. Correct. And, and so he comes home, and the, the funny thing is neither of us know how to share what's going on because God was never a part of our relationship. We, had, we did not, we, we, it just wasn't, it was so far from anything in a relationship. So we, we both come home, and we're whole, both. The closest thing to church was this place called the Church Key Bar right over here. <laughs> I mean, that, was... <laughs> that was it. So for us, we come home, and we're hiding it from each other. So we're both sneaking around. Like, at least I felt like I was sneaking around. I'm, like, asking people questions and trying to figure out this thing about God, and he's talking to God, not knowing it's Hi, prayer. God. You know, I'm, like, searching, you know, out answers. And so um, it's really fun. So this is a fun way how God brought it um, all together. He does things in crazy ways. So this is how we ended up sharing with one another. We got invited to go to a crazy rock concert at, um, at the Camp Randall. So it was a just a crazy rock concert. And we, in the modeling industry... The Rolling Stones Voodoo Lounge Tour. <laughs> just, just think about that. The Voodoo Lounge Tour. <laughs> I mean, there you go. I mean, just it's demonic right there. I mean, but enough said. All we knew was the party. We got we got invited, um, and when when the bands would come into town, they give the models. They'd come to modeling. They'd send somebody over to the modeling industry, give us you know close to front row seats, backstage passes, because they wanted the models to hang out with the band. So that was pretty common when they come through. So they so here we are, like in one of the you know top front rows, and and I invite all these people. There's at least 20 uh, models with us, you know, at, at this concert. It's a beautiful summer night, you know, Camp Randall. I'm looking around, going, wow, look at all the generations here, and and um, all of a sudden the the concert begins and. These images, voodoo images, start popping up all over, and like there's a devil dancing across the screen. And all of a sudden, my palms start sweating, like getting really hot. I'm sweating, and I'm feeling this sense like, I get out, like get out. I need to get out. I'm like, what is happening to me? I'm like sitting there, and I'm like, what is going on? I didn't know what a conviction was. I didn't know what discernment was. I didn't know any. All I knew is all of a sudden, like. There really is good, and there really is evil. And I'm sensing something evil. And I'm like, because I was searching good. You know, I was searching out God. And, and all of a sudden, I'm sitting there. So I'm like, what is happening to me? And I didn't know how to tell anybody what was going I on. I was so not like that. I was watching Mick. <laughs> He's like, stop me up. You know, I, mean, he just, he was just, I, I was like, yeah, come on. Mick, you sing, man. Just, Spit all over me. It's all good. You know, I mean, that's where I was. And I was sitting there going, oh, what's going on? I didn't know how to tell, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how to tell everybody else what was going on. So I sat through the concert miserable. I just sat there and I thought, oh my goodness. And I just, I sweated out. See, I went to school. I went to college for marketing. So to me, that was just that used to always just be their thing, their marketing angle. There was never any reality to it outside. That's just their that's just their gig. So you gotta understand that's that's I was hardcore that way because I, I went to school for marketing. I was marketing my business. And so I, you know, so anyway, so for me to be like, what is happening? So then uh, we leave the concert and we get home that night. And I said, Steve, I gotta talk to you about something because I knew I could not it was so miserable for me, I could not sit through that. So I, it just 
prompted me to have to talk about it and wherever the cards may fall. So we sit down at the kitchen table, and I, <laughs> and I said, Steve, i got to talk to you about something. I said tonight, you know, I told him at the concert that what had happened, and I've been seeking God, and there's something with good and evil, and this is for real. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, he's going to think I'm wacko. And so his, his mouth drops open, and, and I'm like, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's going to break up with me. I think his mouth dropped over because he's like, you're a freak, you know. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, he, he, he goes, and I, and I looked back, and he's like, I've been trying to find a way to talk to you about the very same thing. <laughs> and I, so then my mouth drops open, <laughs> and we're both just staring at each other going, what is happening, you know. It's like, so then we start talking, and then we start realizing that God was encountering us both um, during the ve very same window of time halfway across the world. And I'm telling you, to this day, we've seen so many miracles, including the dead rays, including, you know, uh, I mean, incredible miracles. But to this day, it's still the greatest miracle that I know because God took two people whose hearts were far from him, far, 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 and, and pursued us and then brought us to this point. And it's still like, you just go, how does, how does God do that in a human heart? It's, it's just ama it's amazing. And so um, we're staring at each other. We're like, okay, now, now what do we do? And we're like, okay, I guess we, Steve's like, we go to church. <laughs> church! I'm like, okay. Like, um, and so he, we went to, uh, we started to go to church. And at first we, we went to Catholic church because it was Catholic or nothing at first for him. And, and I didn't know there wasn't anything else. I mean, yeah. for real. I mean, there's like, of course, the, you can yeah. see the big steeple thing, the and at first that, cross and, on top. That's a church. Yeah. No, there are truly born again believers in Catholic church. So just hear me on this. I'm not saying, but for me, I went into the church and they're like, stand up, sit down, cross. And I'm just tell me what to do. I was not a person that I would do something without understanding why. And that's why I wasn't married, because it was just a piece of paper. I would not do it unless I understood what was going on. So st I was, oh, I was struggling. and I just Early morning calisthenics. I was like, oh. And st so, I, so I go, Steve, I go. <laughs> what are we doing? I don't know, but it's fun. Oh, uh, I was like, no, it's not fun, you know? So, <laughs> so we leave there. I'm, I'm, I'm crying. I'm upset. And he's like, what, what? You know, it's all right there. It's a man. You know, it's like, ah. Uh. So I'm crying. He's like, okay, okay, we'll find something else. <laughs> And so we went around and we we went to different um, you know churches and it was pretty crazy just that experience too because um, you know the sad thing at that time too was we were walking in and people could tell you know we came out of the modeling industry we're walking in we're talking to people what's happening and um, we you know people looked at us like a commodity like the modeling industry looked at us as a commodity in fact early on we even got offered to be youth pastors and we had no business I'm thinking you want me to be a youth pastor. Dude, I was getting stoned last <laughs> night. I mean, really, that was like, it was just weird. Because we're having this cool testimony, right? But listen, we weren't saved yet. Do you understand? We were, we still, we're just drawn purpose destiny. We're in the process. But we, when we went to church, we did not hear the salvation message. We didn't get invited to know that we are sinners that needed to be saved. So we went, um, so my, my aunt, uh, married a, a guy that lost his wife and we heard he was a retired pastor so December in 1994 we went to a house party it was a big Christmas house party and um you know again my family in my family it like either you're completely saved or like we are just getting crazy drunk and you know one extreme or the other you know and so people are just there's a lot of drinking going on Steve's right in there <laughs> right in that with it but we're both really you know seeking God we're like we go to this party, and we're like, maybe we can ask Ed at the end of the, you know, we thought, we'll wait, and we'll ask Ed so we stuck questions. around and clean he's, things up. He's my aunt's, yeah. And so everyone's left, and so we're like, we start asking him questions. If you want to tell about that. So we start asking Ed questions, because we're just, we're so hungry. We, yeah, we thought, we can ask him questions, so. Yeah, so we're just sitting on the couch, and I'm sipping my cocktail, and we're just beginning to ask questions about God. And all of a sudden, I you kind of see this look in his eye, like, <laughs> Not it didn't look crazy like it, that. not crazy. It was, it was a good look like wow, he's exaggerating. Yeah. He did not look like crazy. I was exaggerating. <laughs> what? No, come on, just telling a story. <laughs> and I kind of like it too. Like he just took that fishing pole up. Oh, let's just reel these guys in. <laughs> you know. And he goes, "Hey, can I get my Bible?" And we're thinking, "Yeah, sure. Why not? Why don't you do that?" So he <laughs> grabs his Bible and he opens it up and just begins to read from from John chapter three. You know about being born again. And I'm thinking. Okay, that's that's cool. Let's do that. And he goes, and he just shared more scriptures about just we've fallen short of his glory, and 
we just need to repent. And I'm thinking, repent, what's that? You know, I'm just turning from your ways. And I'm thinking, well, what's wrong with my ways? And he goes, have they worked for you? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, he kind of just led us through. And he goes, can, I just, can we just pray together? He goes, I, let's just ask and invite Jesus into your heart. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's do so that. So both there we are on the, on the, on the couch. And he, we just begin to just confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, conf- begin to confess our sins and just overwhelmed by that peace again. Like, ooh, there it is. Like, ah, you started God, to you're weep so again. good. And yeah, yeah, I just started weeping. And, and, and just Jesus came and flooded and filled and just knocked the shame off, knocked the, the condemnation off and <laughs> with the goodness of who he is. Yeah, and at the same time, so, uh, you know, it was really wild because here we are, you know, um, we just we just received Jesus. And then he said, he goes to us, he goes, how would you like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? We're like, sure, what's that? <laughs> so he starts to take us through scripture once again, explaining yeah. what it was to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I think you, again, things happen very different for Steve and I. I'm more of a processor. God's more gentle. Now, with Steve, as we got prayed, he says, well, okay. He goes, okay. And so, again, he just took us through the scripture. He goes, you know, I'm just going to lay hands on you like it says here in the scripture. He goes, you know, something might happen. You might feel heat. You might feel cool. You might feel peace. You might feel nothing. You might start to cry, and you might have, like, something that just wants to come out. Let it out. And so, he just, <laughs> laid, what are you doing? She's moving. Away. I didn't even do anything. Look at that. I wasn't going to. I was just moving closer. <laughs> But he, he just lays hands on us, and he just begins to pray. He says, come, Holy Spirit. And so we just said, come, Holy Spirit. And I mean, it was like, like a ball of fire. Whoa! <laughs> and I mean, I literally was just overcome by power. Now, I was drunk, as you suppose. <laughs> and then the next moment, I was drunk, as you not suppose. Was I literally up. was sobered. The immediate, the immediately, the, the Spirit filled me. Like, all of the effects of alcohol, gone. Destroyed. And I mean, I just, I just remember just screaming out, and then I just began to like have this thing come bubbling up from within me. And I felt little demons go, ah, ah, pew, 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 like this little thing. Just, they were just starting to go, all right, we're, all right, we're out of here, man. This, this house is just too bright. Light for me. <laughs> and so they left, you know, and, so, and, then, and then I'm just overwhelmed by just the kindness of God. And I just began to just speak in tongues. Praying in the spirit, yeah. Just praying in spirit, you know. I was just like, whoa. That's crazy. He never, he had really no, good. he'd never known of that. He never heard it, seen never it, anything. It, it just even... came out of him. Well, I, I, I had exposure to that, but I was still like, again, a processor. I'm like, I, I know it's real with him, but I'm a little bit like, okay, God, I want that, but I would take, I, I went back home and I would just pray and say, God, can we just have this between you and I? And, and it, and for me, that came a little later and it, it was just beautiful. So I like to share that with people because people think they'll hear stories and they think it's God all happen that way with you or it's not real. No, God meets each of us where we're at. And for me, it was a process. And I, I, I did it in my prayer time with him. I know I received something in that moment when he prayed for us. But um, God is, he's a gentleman. And he keep, he'll knock at the door until you're ready to open it. And he'll keep knocking. And so very different, but very similar. We're both like now like, wow, like God has encountered us. Like we are, God is really, like this is a for real like big uh, you know, encounter with him where we, it starts to change everything in our lives. It's like, I was blind and now I see. I was blind. I mean, we know what it is to be blind and now I see everything started to change. Everything started to change. And one of the biggest changes were like, um, well, let's just put it this way. We had lived and, and gone after the things of the world and gone after that. Now it's like, it's time to do it wholeheartedly God's way. We did it the other way, led nowhere, no wholeheartedly God's way. So we start reading the Bible. We're like, well, I guess this, I mean, Ed said this is where we find how to live. So we committed to live according to the word of God. We're like, we did it that way. You know, you can't convince us that that's the way. We, we, there's no, you know, we, we just knew that was empty. So we go and we start going, okay, we're going to live God, God, you know, life God's way. And so we start reading the Bible. And then Steve immediately almost right after receiving the Spirit of God, Steve starts seeing in the Spirit. I mean, he starts seeing angels. He starts seeing demons. He starts, you know, seeing things in the Spirit. And, you know, I think you recognize all your life you're a seer at some point, but you can talk about, but I was more of a feeler. For me, 
I started to really pursue hearing the voice of God, hearing the voice of God. I heard people say, you can hear the voice of God. I'm like, I want to hear the voice of God. I want to hear the voice. I want to hear the voice of God. How, and it asked everyone I could talk to, how do you hear the voice of God? How do you hear the, you know I mean, I just ask everyone, like, you know, I'm like, and you know, and so for me, that was big. And then, and then real, realizing that I, I would feel things. I, he, he would see them. And good thing I would feel them because I probably would think he's crazy. But I, I, he, what he would see, I would feel. So we were moving together that way. So that was right away, like right away. And so when we started to, to go to different churches, and even in the church we landed in, which was a beautiful little, you know, Assembly of God church, and they really discipled us well, but they didn't really quite know what to do with us. Because <laughs> they're like, we don't, you know, like that, like the stuff that was happening to us, they, they just didn't quite have a grid for, even though they're open to the things of the spirit, you know? So I don't know if you want to talk about anything with that, but. Well, I think the big thing is that it was, it was like lights on. I mean, the switch turned on and I'm like seeing everything, like all the time. It was like, I couldn't turn the light switch off. It was broken. And I mean, I would see angels and I mean, it, angels would show up in the night and visit and they'd talk to me and we like even go in the mall and like, I'd see like demons on people's backs. Like these things just, like on the back, so people like, carry Lord, what do I do with that thing? And I'm doing, come on, just, just, you know, go ahead, punch it <laughs> Can't off. Be or, you know, I mean, really, so I'm like, like, <laughs> sincerely, like, why am I seeing all this and what do I get to do with it? You know what I mean? And so a long time I just walked her going, boy, what a bummer. That dude has got that thing and there's two more on his back. Dude, that's crazy, you know? So, but then, you know, the Lord just began to take us into places train. where, I mean, one, our own deliverance and inner healing, but, yes. but then, I mean, immediately we just started praying just deliverance over people. And we just see people get set free from just darkness and oppression and depression and all kinds of things that just actually kept people bound. And it was like, boom, just like immediately, you know. And, you know, part of even, I mean, like I literally would see them, oh, there that one goes. That, oh, that one went, that, that, woo, wow. Well, it's gone. You feel, you feel better? He goes, yeah, I'm feeling really better. This is great. You know? but we can give out the measure of freedom we've received, right? God was delivering us and bringing deliverance to other people. I mean, it was just happening. That's ministry. That's ministry, you know, and so it was just happening. And so what Steve and I get, you know, as you know, it wasn't until this is crazy. So all this is happening. We're finding it in the word of God. Right. We're finding all these things that are happening. We we knew enough to go to the word of God to see if this was for real, what was going on. We knew it was real. It wasn't until we went to church that we heard that some of these things couldn't they couldn't be happening to us. It was in the church that said no, that started making it. And we're like, you can't convince us otherwise. You can't, you can't, like, you know, like, so they, you know, so they knew we were just, we were there. So again, people embrace us where we're at, but we were kind of like, they embraced, but it was kind of like, still not quite sure, <laughs> you know, because things were happening so, so crazy. So a big thing for us too was not nine months after we got saved, we're walking down the aisle together. Now, if, again, recognizing. To get married. To get married, of course. <laughs> oh, it's like walking on eggs. Oh, we're walking down the aisle. Yeah. So, again, the person who did not believe in marriage, you know, um, the person who came out of a divorce with a, a, a child, here we are nine months after get because, oh, marriage is God's idea. I get it now. It's no longer just a piece of paper. It's in his word. It tells us why we are to be married and not sleeping with each other before marriage. And, and, and again, even before we were married, like we started sleeping in other rooms because we realized what God's word said about that. We were going to move apart, but that wouldn't have been good for our son, Justin, who was already between two homes. So God gave us wisdom on how to, how to, you know, how to do that. And so um, we started, uh, so nine months later, again, we're walking on that. People thought, oh my goodness, that I must have been pregnant. I mean, they're just like, how are these two getting married? And our wedding was so funny because we had like believers and then crazy wild, you know, wedding party People from that LA. Were not believers yet. <laughs> and flying in from all over. You know, it was it was a pretty interesting wedding. <laughs> but it was our pro our process, right? God meets us in our process. And so if anything, we want to also share with you, God come, there's so much grace for our process. And God just kept meeting us and transforming us step by step, but it did take our yielding and our continued yes to God, you know, definitely a, a continued yes to God. So um, 
actually, from that point then, we went and um, so we're going and all of a sudden, so at first the modeling industry was a wide open mission field, right? It's like, oh, we know what they need, what they're looking for. So many, we saw many people get, you know, saved and at least um, learn about who God was and different things because our lives were being so radically transformed. We were able to both lead my ex-boyfriend who I lived with for seven years. He was in the industry as well. Um, to the Lord, and his yeah. wife knows the Lord. She was one of my models, and you can put all this together later. <laughs> but we led them both to the Lord. Steve led us. We both got to lead his ex-wife to the Lord. Come on. This is like this boom, boom, boom. boom. And, and this is not all right at the same time, but these are the things that are happening. My sister, who you've met here, Bet, came to know the Lord. My mom, Steve's family, you know, his, and, and so we just, we're just seeing this, right? All these things. This is over time, over a period of time. You can talk more about that. But in the modeling, as we're seeing, in the modeling agency in particular, as we're seeing salvation. But there's something that was, that, wouldn't, that was just tugging at me. It was just tugging at me because we were in compromise and didn't really realize it. We just seen it as a big, wide open mission field. But I had models half, you know, I just had, we had calendars, bikini calendars, all these things, right? We had, I was, we were marketing, we were marketing sex, you know, basically sex appeal, whatever you want to call it. I was. And so um, God is like, he, people would encounter him, but they weren't quite going into the full radical encounter that we were. And I was like, what is going on? I'm asking God, what's going on? And he said, God, he said, you know, like, like you're feeding them the very thing that in bondage and then offering you're offering me on one hand and, and bondage on the other. You got to give it up, you know, and he starts speaking to me about that. But what ultimately did it for me is when we because Steve and I would we were so hungry. We, we couldn't like everywhere we went, we were looking for more of God and more of God. And we couldn't find a church in the area at the time that would even touch inner healing and deliverance or a lot of this stuff. So we drove down. There's a we heard about a revival going on in Pensacola, Florida. And we're like, we would jump in a car like the next day and drive 24 hours. That's just just how we were. You couldn't you couldn't, you know, we're so God we, chasers. Yeah. <laughs> we were just we're like, gonna ah! find God. And so we went. We down. still are today. I mean, that hasn't changed yes. at all. Our longing is for the more of God, Come to on. see His face, to know more of His goodness and grace and goodness. And never woo. apologize for that, you guys. Never apologize for the zeal in your heart. Never, never, and never let anything put it out. Never, ever, ever. We're gonna fan that flame <laughs> in people as long as we live. So we're on our. We're 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 driving down there, and and um, they. It was lines and lines of people. This is before anything's on in, on TV or social media. This is happening, God, fully God. No, no, it wasn't media at all. And so there's people from all over there, lines and lines of people lining up all day to get in every night, night after night after night, just an outpouring of God's spirit. And, and so we, we get in, and it was a Friday night, and every Friday night they had water baptisms. And they would have people give testimony while they were, uh, while they were getting water baptized. And there was a, a man who was getting water baptized, and he starts talking about addiction to images of women like he would talk, like an alcoholic would talk about alcohol. He was, it was in that way, and I'd never heard a man talk about that being an addiction and that it actually destroyed his life. It destroyed his marriage. It destroyed everything. All of a sudden, man, conviction came over me. I am weeping. I am like, I was like, I am so sorry, God. I never saw it that way. I never saw it. I'm so sorry. And so all of a sudden, so the God starts to work on me, and I have to, he said, you're going to let go of the modeling agency. If you let go of it, I will make you an ambassador of my beauty. And there's actually a, a, one of the, we didn't show it up there, but an article written um, about my modeling agency that was titled Ambassador of Beauty from the secular, um, you know, media. And so anyway, so God had said, let go of it. I will make you an ambassador of my beauty. Now, did it happen just like that? I wish I could say I was immediately obedient. It took, a, it was a process. He started working on my heart. My identity was wrapped up in right. being, in that anything that your identity is wrapped up in is going to take probably the longest to get free from. Steve, alcohol was his identity, you know, party, you know, the life of the party. Mine was a modeling agency. So God, he starts working and all of a sudden, you know, I was able, I remember the day that I was able to, to let it go and say, okay, now during that time 
you know, um, we're like big and, and we start moving out of the modeling and letting go of the agency, moving out of the agency because God said, Steve kept saying, God's getting the Egypt out of us, you know, <laughs> right? That's what it's true. Did. It didn't take 40 years, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> But I'm like, I, I, oh my goodness, you guys, I just so, it was such a struggle. There's so many times where I'm like, because we were losing, you know, here we're following God so hard, right? We're loving him with all we are, and things in the natural are getting worse. Not better, worse. We're losing every, we're losing everything. We're losing, I mean, I didn't think the only thing we didn't lose were, was our house at the time, you know, really. I mean, we were losing, our cars were breaking down. We're using parts from other cars to fix them. We're, we're, we're just, we go from the modeling industry, dressed to the hilt, money just like whatever, to I'm at garage sales. I'm at Goodwill, you know. I'm like, what is happening, God? You know, I'm like, I thought, and then of course, even in the church, there are different people are looking at, you must be in sin, or you must be doing something wrong, or you must be because, you know, God would be blessed seeing you if this was his will. Well, then God started taking us to scripture and he started showing So I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. That wasn't the one I got. <laughs> but anyway, it was, it was like, he, the Holy Spirit's like, did life necessarily get better for this disciple, this person in the natural? Did it get better? Did, or did circumstances become harder? For Jesus, did it get easier or did it get harder in the natural? In the natural, what happened? And I'm like, why do we get, I mean, it does get better, but in a different way. God is working things out so we come into more of him. And you have to, you have to, you know, you're learning to yield to that process. So one of the biggest times, the biggest convictions that came to me, and we're, we're in this. So we, Steve, um, if you want to talk about you came out of a, a job, you know, when we got called into ministry, um, right before we got called in. We'll just talk about how we got called into. We were already doing ministry full time. It's just there was a call in our lives to then go vocationally into full time ministry. So, um, but go ahead and talk about you were at a job. Well, part of it, we had this this band. We started yeah. this worship band. We traveled all over the place, even even overseas and stuff like that. Just He's worshiping, drummer, bringing good news, just preaching to all highways and byways and everywhere in between. I mean, God would have us like show up even at like secular events, and we would just play. You know who we were, and we'd see people get saved and healed and all kinds of really cool miracles all along the way. And so, you know, our band, we were traveling several days a week, and part of it, I was just like, Lord. Man, something's got to give you because you know, you're getting home till three in the morning. You got to be at the office at you know eight thirty, and it was just like. <sighs> and so I just remember one day just saying, "God, how much longer?" I mean, either we'd do this or we'd do this, and I just really felt the Lord say, "You're only there for another season, and then you'll be you'll, you'll be sent out." And so we said, "Okay, that's great." So I remember when this three months went by, I'm going, "I thought you said a season, Lord." <laughs> this is long. Okay, six months, eight. Come on, you know and. And I remember one day, um, the company that I was working for, uh, there were some financial mishandlings with the, uh, the chief financial officer. And when the owners found out, they freaked out. And so they literally just started firing people, literally. I mean, so our whole department <laughs> got closed and, you know, several others as well. And w when, when that got closed, um, it was just kind of like, I was like, oh, okay, here's, here's the season. It's up. And, you know, part of it was nice because the, the, the owners, you know, they ended up giving us several months, uh, several, uh, severance pay and all kinds of stuff. It was really a, a blessing in a sense, too, because even as we, we transitioned out of one place into the next, it was like God just had the provisions already laid out for us. But part of it, too, was just like, all right, Lord, we're going to do this. Not that we weren't, weren't already, like Renee said, we were already doing ministry. Like, our lives were ministry. I mean, we'd be up till 3 in the morning several days a week just praying for people. We had our house open on Wednesday nights and Friday nights. And we were just open all the time because we wanted more of God. And we were, we were continually after the heart of God. We, we longed to be in his presence. We longed to see people set free. And, and we were seeing God just trusted us with that. He said, but now this is a different season. Is I'm going to begin to move you into a vocational dimension of ministry. And see, not everyone's called to be in the vocational dimension. I mean, because even as we see, like, the seven mountains of society, I mean, we're, we're, we as believers are called to every Come sphere, on. every place of influence. And, uh, you know, God has this in, in, still in several places, but, but, but our main primary really is, is the religion mountain. We're called to rise to the top of that so that we can train and equip the saints to be Jesus wherever Come they're on. at. And Come so on. that was really our longing in our heart. And so God took us in this whole transition and shift us from one place into the next because he really had you in mind. Come on. <laughs> For real. 
And that's why we're doing what we're doing is because we see you. We see what God has put inside you. And we want to see the dreams and desires that the Father put inside you become real and be made manifest so that the world can see the goodness of Jesus wherever God has you. Maybe you're a school teacher. Rock on and just be the light. Yeah. Maybe, you're, maybe you're called to be a missionary to the deepest, darkest places of the planet. Rock on. Just be the light of Jesus. Maybe you're called to be the CEO of, the, of a Fortune 500 company. Rock on. Just do it. And just be Jesus. Because, you know, that's what God is doing. He's raising up influencers. He's raising up transformers. He's raising up literally a generation that are literally going to cause reformation to be made manifest so the radiance of Christ can be seen. Yeah. And see, that's what we get to be part of. We all get to be part of this, you know? And every one of us has a testimony. Yeah. I mean, for real, every one of us has a testimony. Yeah. Because, see, that's how we overcome the accuser. Yeah. We see that in Revelation chapter 12, that we overcome the accuser by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, for your blood Jesus. that has washed us clean and the word of our testimony and not li- loving our lives even unto the death. I mean, I've had guns pulled on me four times. I've been, been beaten in the streets by neo-Nazi skinheads. And we'll talk about that story some other time. But, I mean, just crazy stuff that when you go after the God, guess what? He'll step. always protect you. He always will protect you. Always protect you. See, because we haven't been given a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. Come on. And God wants to use our minds. Yeah. You know, that's one thing about Christians. A lot of times we... we, we check our minds out of the door and God's saying, no, man, you have the mind of Christ. It's time to use it, you know? And so, anyway. Yeah. Can I have, can we have, you guys come up here and um, I just want to, because we're just going to conclude with a couple of things and I feel like there's so many stories we want to share with you guys. Um, you know, um, again, all the way from the first missions trip that, you know, at the very first time Steve uh, led a team over there, they got attacked, like you said, and, and it, that put it on the line the very first time that my husband could go or we could go as a family and not come back. That did not stop God from continuing on. We have been, almost lost our house. We've been offered houses um, to move other places and join other ministries, and we've turned them down. We have, um, God has put test after test in front of us to say, will you be obedient to what I've called you to? And the testing is good. The testing is very good. And so we got to know when we're being tested and when we're being tempted and distinguish it. But God will put, put us because we need to, he's, he wants to, he wants to, he's producing something um, deep with inside of us. And two points I just want to make. One of the very important, because this is all about yielding our lives, letting go of the old filthy rays and entering into the glorious riches. You know, this is what this part, this part of our testimony is. We want you to see and know we have pursued those things of the world, those things that you long, you think that you're going to be fulfilled, and we're telling you it's an empty, it's an empty street. And to wholeheartedly give everything to Christ, nothing is more glorious, nothing is more full of adventure. There is never a dull moment when you're yielded to God and when you're being led by His Spirit. It may be hard at times, but I'll tell you, never a dull moment always an adventure and so we got to enter into this god will continue to to we're all doing this together this next way we we have the opportunity right here right now this small company of people right now to do great things in this city and in the nations of the earth so god's doing it so two things in yielding one when we when everything is going bad and 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 we we're given wholeheartedly and we're we're trying to decide god are, are we really you know, in your will, like what is going on? Or like, we're just, you know, frust- I'm so frustrated. I'm like, God, everything's getting worse. And I can do something about this. I remember just yelling out, I can do, so- I can go out and get a job. You know, I'm very qualified. I know how to run businesses. I'm very, like, I can do something about this. And he stopped me dead in my track and said, and so could have my son when he was on the cross. Because it said he could have called angels concerning him, taken off the cross. He goes, but for the greater purpose, he endured the cross for the greater good. He, t- he went where I asked him to go, and I'm asking you to do the same. Oh, now, if that doesn't stop you dead in your tracks, God, I'm so sorry. I yield to your process. Yield to your process. And then there was another time, the other part, when we're going, we're still, we're going hard after God. We're seeing all these salvations, right? We're seeing all these people get saved, salvations. We're going, and it, it's all looking really good. And then God does another change up in our lives. We go down to IHOP, KC. We go down to International House of Prayer because God said, 
we said a part was like 40 days to seek God for the, the deeper thing. The next thing we were feeling that prompting. What's going on? What's going on? So we go down there. And we're going, God, what is, you know, I, I can, so I'm going, God, God, what is, what is my purpose? What is our destiny? What is this next phase? What, you know, and again, he starts, you know, speaking about just being, and he starts to, you know, say, all of a sudden, I didn't hear anything, actually, at first, when I was just saying, what is my purpose? What, because that worked in the last season. What is my, he met us in that, right? What is my purpose? What, I wasn't getting any answers, and because now something else is going on in our lives. So change up the question. You guys, listen, this is important. Change up the question. Not getting an answer. Change up the question. So my question, all of a sudden, something happens. And I said, oh, God, what's on your heart and how can I be a part of it? Opened up. Everything came out. went from our purpose, our destiny, to now, God, what's on your heart and how can we be a part? <clears throat> and that's when God started to speak to us about it's all about his presence and cultivating worship and prayer and an atmosphere of his presence and that out of being we would do because we we were doing a lot but he, he he knew back then that would not sustain us that our own strength we're young you know we are young and full of just like we're out to the bars at three in the morning it's easy to be out you know every, anywhere else till three in the morning that was easy we're young you know it's not so easy now for me I still am but it's by his strength for sure yeah, you know it's like not nah, you know, but it's like, he, so he started to say, and he started asking us to shift in that season. Like, we want, I want my presence and, you know, and an atmosphere of prayer and worship. And we started learning about a worship lifestyle, about being and then doing, right? The Jesus being at our finish line. So maybe we could just tell that story and then go into prayer about Jesus. We heard a message about Jesus being at the finish line. So do you want to share that? And then we can pray into that. Yeah, and that, that was really it because we were, we were doing a lot of cool things for Jesus. I mean, I mean, hundreds of people get saved through the through the through the music ministry and all of that. And it was a message that we heard one day, and and as the guy was sharing, he just said, "You know, I just want to challenge you today. Who's at your finish line? Is it your influence for Jesus, or is it Jesus Himself?" And I went, "Whoa!" Conviction. And I remember just having to take a big deep breath and going, "Wow." I can honestly say, Lord, that just doing stuff for you has been my finish line. And then the Lord just said, well, come, come be with me. I'm going to show you a whole different way. And not that you won't ever do again because I've created you to be ones that will, but I need you to be. And as we made him the priority, this idea of just the restoration, the first commandment, that from that place of gazing and beholding the beauty of the Lord, that as we gaze like like David, and in the gazing dimension, the gazing moment is all of a sudden your heart is transformed with this transcendent beauty of who God is, and you're like, oh my gosh! And then everything we do becomes a response of love because He first loved us. And see, I believe that's what He's inviting all of us into. That when life gets busy, when life gets hectic, that when we get caught up in the doing, God just saying, it's time just to be my child. Let me just hold you. Let me just draw you near. Let, let, let me just bring you close to my heart so you can hear what's inside. Because when we begin to switch the question and begin to switch the prayer, Lord, what are you doing and how can I be part of it? Rather than saying, God, bless what I'm doing. What is he doing? And, and that's part of that place of being. Because David, as he, as he focused his gaze upon the beautiful man, Christ Jesus... And he was caught up in the awe and the splendor and the magnificence of the man with the eyes of fire. Then there was a dimension where he was able to inquire. And as he inquired, God gave him wisdom. God gave him strategy. God gave him hope. God gave him strength. God gave him the truth, the reality that when he was 17 years old and he was anointed king, saying, remember, remember, remember back in that field what I spoke to you, what I declared over you. And there's many of you that even have dreams that have died. God's saying, remember what I spoke to you. Remember what I've put in your heart, even as a child. Remember, it's time to remember. Those things have not died. Those things have not died, and he wants to even just water those seeds today. He wants to bring them back to life. You know, because the reality, unless a, a grain of wheat or a seed falls to the ground and dies, it will never bear fruit. And saying, God's saying that in those seasons where you've, you've literally let those things die, it's a time and a season now just to let my love water those things that will bring about the hope. It'll bring about the reality of the calling that I put in 
inside of you because I've got great things for you, says the Lord. Plans that are just beyond your wildest imagination. Because it's a due season. God's saying, you know, don't lose heart because I'm about to bring about a harvest. Just hold fast to me. Just know that I'm with you always, even to the end of the age is what Jesus said. And so I just want to declare that over you. Make them your first. And don't just do it for a season. Like, make it your focus forever. Let that be your mission statement. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about you? You know what I mean? And really make that the mission. Because, see, the way that you can turn and say, how about you, is then that's the second commandment. It becomes an outflow of being touched by the goodness and the love of God. Fire of God's love is here right now, and I just, I feel like we need to respond. I, I just, God is saying, you know, this whole time we've gone into this fasting, and he has called us deeper still, beloved, deeper still. And there are dreams that we get to enter in, and it's going to require fully letting go of the last season. We need to fully say those are like rags, yeah. and, and I want the riches. Yeah. So can we just let, let respond to that? Like God, God's so inviting us into the more, right? Into the more for each one of us. Why would you ever think you're disqualified? Why, why would we do that? You know, he, he paid a great price. He gave it all that we would walk in it all, the fullness so he's calling, he's, he's tugging on hearts. Come on, fullness, fullness. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. And he wants to awaken hearts to more. There's more of my glorious riches. There's more. Beloved, beloved, there's more. Beloved, there's more. Deeper still, deeper still, there's more. You won't be disappointed. Not when, you, not when you're fully in. You'll struggle until you're fully in. Once you're fully in, you'll never regret that decision. If you're struggling, there needs to be a full, like, I'm coming all the way in. It's a process, but right here is an invitation for deeper. There's an invitation right now for deeper. So let's just um, give him a chance to respond. Yeah, just, just posture your heart. You can, you can stand, you can kneel, you can lay out on the floor, but just, on. just posture yourself just to receive the simple whispers of your Heavenly Father that is so mindful of you. You're not a disappointment. You're His delight. You're not a nuisance. You're His joy. And He loves you with an everlasting love. A love that will never, ever fade. wants to lavish you with his love this morning.